I hate Thanksgiving. An entire holiday devoted to making awkward conversation while you eat a variety of mushes? No thank you. Terrible holiday top to bottom. The only good thing that has ever happened on Thanksgiving was that one time that Sonic the Hedgehog exploded and took out a cop on his way down. Watch out! You're gonna crash! Ah! But I do love ice cream. And thankfully, Salt and Straw has just released a line of ice cream pints themed after a traditional Thanksgiving dinner which is exactly unhinged enough to sound amazing. So I'm going to sit down today, eat all five pints, and see if they can get me to love this terrible, terrible holiday that has no redeeming qualities that I could not possibly ever love under any circumstances. Let's go to the set. I just don't really see the point of the holiday overall. Like, Thanksgiving to me seems like it's all of the bad parts of Christmas, but without any of the good parts of Christmas. Plus, to top it all off, for some reason we decided to put it right next door to Christmas. Like, all of the family gathering holidays are backloaded into the calendar. So if you gotta fly, like me, then you're flying out two months in a row with like two to three weeks in between. It, I, I can't afford to do that. I, I think it's weird that we expect people to try to afford to do that every single year. I haven't seen my family for Thanksgiving in like five years. Also, I don't like the food. There, I said it. I know it's a hot take, but I hate Thanksgiving food. Turkey, mashed potatoes, corn, all in one sitting. I'm from rural Ohio. That's not a special meal. My school lunch had that exact meal on the menu once a week. Plus, corn and mashed potatoes in the same meal, that's a ton of starch. Okay, I may have been raised Mennonite, but I'm not planning on raising a barn today. I'm planning on getting drunk and watching Sonic the Hedgehog attack a police officer. Okay, now that that's out of my system, I want to say that I do genuinely want to give Thanksgiving a second chance. This holiday means a lot to a lot of people and I should give it a fair shake. Personally, I've grown quite fond of my normal Thanksgiving tradition of going to Denny's, which I know sounds ridiculous, but actually it's really nice. Late November is right when LA's version of winter is starting to hit, so it's a little breezy. You can just put on a nice cozy sweater, get a booth by the window, and kind of be alone in a crowd for a little bit. And besides, who could possibly have a problem with an American staple like Denny's? They appear to be the same Denny's. So I've done my best to get into the holiday spirit. I've got my little paper turkey guy and my decorative fall leaves. And Oh, I got this dry erase board to remind me to be thankful. You know, actually, wait, I hate this stuff. I hate it. The worst part of Thanksgiving is when you have to go around the table and everyone says what they're thankful for. Like. Thanks. I don't have school today, but now I've got an assignment at the dinner table. God, this holiday is broken. Sorry. Uh, you guys came here for the ice creams, so let's let's bring out the ice creams. Who's ready to get creamed? Wait, please don't. Salt and Straw's Thanksgiving series is made of five pints of ice cream. Parker House Rolls with salted buttercream, roasted peach and sage cornbread stuffing, caramelized turkey and cranberry sauce, mom's mango pie, and finally, pumpkin and ginger snap pie. We're gonna start with the Parker House Rolls. All right, Parker House Rolls with salted buttercream. First up, straight out of Portland, Oregon. The official description on the Salt and Straw website is, what's a holiday feast without warm, fluffy rolls? We carb load by gently folding buttered rolls topped with flaky sea salt into a salted butter ice cream to double down on the savory, making this simple side the most coveted. It's rich, it's decadent, and it's as classic as it gets. You, know, you can really see kind of the whole buttercream thing going on. It actually has King's Hawaiian rolls chopped up and folded into the ice cream. Can you kind of see there on the thing? Hello. Not at all. Not at all. Not at all. Well, it's got, you're gonna have to take my word for it. It's got King's Hawaiian rolls up in the ice cream. And you know, it actually really works. There's like a world of difference between uh, a bite that has one of the rolls in it and a bite that doesn't. If you get a bite of just the ice cream, 
the salt really stands out. And you get the sort of same flavor as like a salted caramel, even though there's no caramel, but you get kind of that salted and sweet mix. But when you get a roll up in there, the actual, the roll changes the texture so much that it is, it's like a, it's like a whole different ball game. Actually, you wanna? Oh. I really like that. <laughs> that passed the assignment. That's, <laughs> passed. That's, a, that's a biscuit right there. <laughs> well, that's Liv's review. That's a biscuit right there. All right, up next we've got roasted peach and sage cornbread stuffing. Uh, according to the Salt and Straw website, in this classic twist on stuffing, we ditch bread cubes for molassesy, crumbly cornbread cookies and bring that classic herbiness by steeping sweet cream with fresh sage. Dollops of tart peach jam simmered with warm spices and honey balsamic vinegar brighten it all up for a balanced woodsy ice cream. Of all the things I hate about Thanksgiving, uh, I hate stuffing the most. I think it's awful. I don't. I don't understand the point. I think it tastes like garbage, and I think turkey tastes really good on its own without adding weird bread to it. But oh my god, look at look at the swirl going on in there. Actually, that's really exciting. I love that swirl. I think that's probably the peach. My guess is there's probably some kind of peach jam or peach jelly going on up in there. I can see all the little peach bits, and I do like I like peach and I like jam. Okay, we'll see if we can get a little bit of bread in there. Looks like you like it. I like it, but you know what I didn't expect to like about it? The sage. The sa it really stands out. You can taste the like herbs. It's like a really herby ice cream. It's not until you're staring down the barrel of five pints of ice cream that you realize how much ice cream five pints is. <laughs> Do you want some? Leave a comment if you want me to send you a, a, an opened pint of ice cream. Liv, <laughs> you want some? To me, this tastes like a peach pie. Yeah, no, it kind of does. I don't know if I would have picked out stuffing. I, you can you can pick out peach and you can pick out herbs. Maybe that's why I like it, because I hate stuffing so much, but I do yeah, like pie. I, if you handed me and said, what is this? I wouldn't say stuffing. I'd say, this is peach, peach cobbler, or peach pie ice cream. That one, if you handed it to me without telling me what it was, yeah. I'd say that was the biscuit. You're right. Actually, you got a lot of. You, you want to come in here? Come in here for the for the next three. Sure. Yeah. We'll, come, we'll, we'll get you a chair. Okay. Time for the main course: caramelized turkey and cranberry sauce. Uh, re uh, redo that. Fifth sticks. That was a bad one. Sixth sticks. Seventh sticks. There we go. We did it. Hi, I'm Silas Cade. <laughs> All right, up next we have the main course. We have, this is turkey, uh, caramelized turkey and cranberry sauce. The official description from the Salt and Straw website is, the main dish has met its match. Crispy turkey bacon folded into a caramelized brittle with thyme and freshly ground cubeb pepper is swirled with a sweet and jammy house-made cranberry sauce. The tartness from the cranberry cuts through the smoky turkey bacon from our friends at Distal Farms for the transcendent trifecta of sweet, savory, and bitter. This is also the one I think I'm most interested in because it's turkey bacon flavored ice cream. I didn't know, yeah, I didn't know until that that it was bacon. Yeah. So let's give this a shot. Let's see what's going on here. Uh, this is probably the most colorful one so far. You can see all the cranberry going on. Uh, it doesn't quite have the nice, like, swirl that the peach did visually. It looks interesting. Yeah. I'm very curious. Let's try to get some cranberry and some turkey bacon. Hmm. The, uh... Oh. Hmm. Oh, no. Remember when I said that the saltiness from the Parker House rolls kind of worked because it was sort of like a sea salt caramel? Yeah. I don't think the saltiness works here. Oh, no. See, I have never had cranberry sauce with turkey, so I'm gonna get some without it to see what it <laughs> tastes like as turkey. Uh, 
<laughs> so the official review is right here. Why is it like that? What are these chips? I think that's the turkey bacon. Oh, this isn't. This isn't good. Wait, let me this try. Isn't it. Right. Let me try the. Let me. Let me try the chip again. Let me see what's going on there. It's very busy. There's. There's so much going on, yeah. and none of it says turkey. Actually, you know, this is the this is the first one of the night that's gluten free. We could probably actually have heroin here. Do you want a new spoon, or are we close enough? I'll survive. Okay. I've survived worse. I see what y'all mean, but I kind of like it. Really? Because I like salted caramel. Because I'm salt deficient. No wonder. So all the salt tastes I'm like salt me. deficient. <laughs> I still think it tastes like garbage. Literal garbage. For me, it just tastes like salted caramel with like a little hint of jam. They Perfect. shouldn't be allowed to make that. Perfect. All right, we got two more. Let's bring those out. Okay. No, I don't like them. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad you like it. We start dessert with Mom's Mango Pie. The official salt and straw description is this ice cream represents the diversity of Thanksgiving traditions with the help of musician Rushikesh Hirway and his mom. Realizing her secret recipe translated perfectly to ice cream, we didn't change much. Mango puree blended with tangy cream cheese and fluffy whipped cream creates a silky sweet curd reminiscent of her pie filling. Crumbles of salty graham cracker crust are layered throughout a rich, caramelized ice cream for a cultural mashup that'll be the standout star of your next Thanksgiving spread. You know me, I'm a big fan of Hearway's mom. <laughs> well, we're big Hearway's mom stands on this channel. Um, we, love we love her and her pie. This one isn't gluten free. Carol, you, you feel comfortable? I don't know how bad you're. You, you're. Right, my shit. <laughs> Okay, that's on you. I'm not, I don't, I take, if Carol's dead, it's not my fault. Just put a little blurb on the bottom that we do not take any responsibility. Don't, we are not liable. my girlfriends, <laughs> and we'll be fine. Okay, we won't, we won't show your girlfriend this video. <laughs> don't watch, don't watch it, Katie. Oh, this bad boy is mango. That is some yellow mm. pie. Um, we have no one manning the camera now, so. <laughs> <laughs> this is probably the least Sunday. It looks the most, I, oh no, there's a little bit of sun. Oh, oh no, there's some chunks. There's some chunks in there. Oh, in there. Like chunks. Yeah, you gotta dig for the chunks, but they're there. Interesting, this one isn't like mango jam in a sundae. This is mango flavored ice cream. Yeah, it's mango ice cream with some pie bits. I actually have to say, I don't think I'm a huge fan. I kind of wish it was like a mango jam or something, maybe. Yeah, it doesn't feel special. It doesn't feel like... I wouldn't say this is Thanksgiving. -y. Yeah. I taste the mango. It tastes like mango and it tastes like it's just random pie bits. Yeah. Yeah. But they don't there's feel something like... else like underneath it that I don't know what it is. Huh. Uh, ingredients are mango puree, milk, cream, sugar, graham crackers, honey, lemon juice, the cream cheese. But I do like, I appreciate the cream cheese. You can taste the thickness. Butter, uh, tapioca syrup? Is that it? Maybe it tastes kind of tapioca y? I think it's the butter. Excuse me. Let me see. Now that I know the ingredients, I can kind of taste, I can taste the honey, I can taste the butter. Is it a little too buttery? Yeah, maybe you're right. In the, in the biscuit, you could taste butter as a flavor. Yeah. And I think that's what's happening here, too. But like, butter usually tastes good, though. Well, we're still big. We're it's still Hearway's mom fan channel. Um, that doesn't that hasn't changed. That's not her cooking. Yeah. No matter what, even though I didn't really like these last two that we've tasted, I think the general consistency of their ice cream is really good. Oh yeah. Yeah. I can agree with that. Yeah. I think you get. If I learn anything about this, it's that I want to eat a sponsor. <laughs> We're not sponsored by Salt and Straw. We should have. Yeah, yeah. We yeah. should have gotten them before we started the video. And our last course of the night is pumpkin and ginger snap pie. So Salt and Straw's official pumpkin and ginger snap pie description is our secret to pumpkin pie, a heavy pinch of sea salt and allspice added to a classic blend for a warmer, more complex flavor. We spike ultra luscious coconut cream with our special blend and Vermont maple syrup to achieve the silkiest, custardiest pumpkin pie ice cream. 
Bits of molasses-infused ginger snap pie crust is tossed in for a delectable crunch. This one I can see being very good, uh, just because I think pumpkin and ginger snap works together really well as a pie. Never had ginger snap. Oh, my sister makes some of the best, like, gingerbread and uh, let me let's bring let's her on bring her on <laughs> oh that's right she's in <laughs> illinois uh this one is actually vegan though so we've got one gluten-free and one vegan option before i open it i'm envisioning like pumpkin flavored ice cream with like bits of ginger snap in it yeah no that looks it looks very gingerbready yeah. the kind of coloring doesn't it looks sort of we're pumpkin pie yeah we're pumpkin pie the same fish the same sort of shade of low intensity red I want to try just the, just the ice cream. Oh, I can get down with the pumpkin ice cream. Yeah? Yeah. And I like the ginger snap too. This is solid, I like this one. I can smell the pumpkin. Yeah. I, okay, I see what you mean about the ginger, it's <laughs> gingery. It's gingery. A tiny spicy cookie. That tastes like a pie, it does not taste like pumpkin ice cream. Yeah! Yeah, no, you're right. The mango pie tasted like mango ice cream with pie bits. This tastes like pumpkin pie. It has the consistency of like a pie type ice cream. Yeah. Yeah, Carol approves. I fuck with pumpkin pie. I don't like any other type of pie besides pumpkin, really. No, yeah. Take it away from her. <laughs> this one might be my favorite. You know what I'm surprised by is that this is this is a vegan one. I, I can taste cream cheese. I know there's not cream cheese, there can't be cream cheese because cream cheese isn't vegan. But I it it has the like consistency of a cream cheese pumpkin pie. Well, also like don't isn't Okay, they use vegan butter for this one. It's just why wouldn't they just use vegan butter for the other ones? Yeah, I don't know. Especially because this is surprisingly creamy for a, a like a vegan ice cream. I'm, I'm still kind of a big fan of the, the, the rolls. The rolls? Yeah. Oh I never got to have the rolls. You want to the rolls? Let's get the rolls. Let's let's catch you up, Carol. Let's catch you up. We started with the uh, Parker House rolls with salted buttercream. You said there were Hawaiian rolls in this. Yeah, it's tiny little Hawaiian rolls. This one was made just for you. Literal tiny pieces of bread are in the ice cream. Katie's going to kill us. Yes. If Katie doesn't know. What That's hurt too me. big of a bite. That's too big. <laughs> I don't see a single piece of bread in there. It's like a hint of sweetness, more, it's like vanilla with like a lot of cream in it. It's you nice. can taste the butter, right? I feel like this would be really good in like a Rupert float. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Just yeah. Bring out, the Bring out the root beer. Bring out the root beer. That is good though. I really do like that. Um, and the other one is the roasted peach and sage cornbread stuffing. Oh yeah, that one. This has the peach jam in it. Hmm. I see what you mean by you can taste the sage, but it's really good. Yeah. So I still like this one. I still love that. So, uh, Liv, if you were to um, gun to your head, Parker House pumpkin pie, which one do you go with? I say, please take the gun away. I don't need either of them. It's just ice cream. You can have them. But if you're asking me if I was in the grocery store and I could only pick one, it, okay, that is a weird format we use for question asking, isn't it? I never thought about it before today, but yes. So they're very similar, actually. What I like about this one is that it's very filling, and I wouldn't eat too much of it in one sitting. Mm -hmm. And what I like about this one is that it tastes like a pipe. Okay, so um, I guess quick opinions. I'm going to say Parker House Rolls with salted buttercream. That's just really good. I don't... Mm. The Parker House Rolls gets the award, for me at least, for the most Thanksgiving-y. Hmm. None of the other ones made me feel like I was sitting down to a Thanksgiving dinner as much as the Parker House Rolls. You need to stop. Stop. It was my final one of the non- of the forbidden one. Get her off the set! No! Yeah, you know, you're right, because the pumpkin pie, while very good, is sort of a general fall. I feel like I'd see that in the grocery store all year round. Yeah. Yeah, the roasted peach sage and cornbread stuffing gets the surprised me the most award. Mm -hmm. That's the one where I don't think it's my favorite, but it's punching way above its weight class. Then I think I have to go with the turkey and cranberry sauce for not quite working, but it's ambitious and I appreciate its ambition. And it did work really well for at least one of my friends. And I do value Carol's opinion. The caramelized turkey and cranberry sauce, I wish I liked because I, I wish that I could say that it's surprisingly good. 
You'd never expect an ice cream that's full of turkey bacon to be good, but I have to say, unfortunately, you are unsurprised to learn that an ice cream full of turkey bacon is in fact not good. Except to Carol. Except to Carol. You heard it's you. <laughs> I think Mom's mango pie is the one is my is the one I like the least. Specifically because even though maybe it's a little better than the turkey bacon one, the turkey bacon one gets interesting points where this is just kind of falls flat. Yeah. It tastes like Auntie's mango pie, not Mom's. Interesting. Explain. As I went from pint to pint, the weirdest thing started happening. I became less interested in whether or not I liked the ice cream and far more interested in talking about the ice cream with other people. And you know what? Yeah, five pints of ice cream is a lot when you eat it by yourself, but you're not supposed to be eating these alone. You're supposed to be sharing them with your friends and partners. Everything that I normally hated about Thanksgiving became way easier as soon as it stopped being an obligation and started being a choice. You know, my main problem with Thanksgiving, aside from the obvious celebration of colonialism, is that it's a holiday that turns human connections into an assignment and stops them from being a decision. Did these ice creams help me love Thanksgiving? No. I hate Thanksgiving, I always will. It's a terrible holiday with no redeeming qualities. But I love having a conversation and a meal with my friends. So, happy meal and conversation day, everybody. We're actually not gonna be able to upload until after Thanksgiving. Fuck Thanksgiving. <laughs> okay, so I remember I was visiting New Orleans once around Easter. And uh, we went to the Easter service, which of course is a really big deal. A guy about four or five pews ahead of us just like fell over. <laughs> and the guys around him left with a cell phone. And about 15 minutes later, paramedics came and my dad was like, oh, he looks like he had a hunger. <laughs> but did, did you see him at the next Easter though? Uh, I don't know, we were on vacation at the time. It's not our church. You went to church on vacation? Uh, <laughs> I'm better now.